This podcast is a proud member of the UUOP Network. Welcome to the second episode of the Taste of Universal podcast. I am your host, Madeline, and joining me are my co-hosts, Kayla. Hello. Kelly. Hi, friends. And Shelby. Hi. So Tracy wanted to be here, but this is one of the weeks where her university classes interfered with scheduling. But never fear, she contributed all her thoughts on today's topics, and she will be back for our March episode. First of all, we'd love to start off and thank everyone for the outpouring of support we received on the first episode. Thanks for reaching out on Instagram and Facebook, and we are loving recording this podcast and interacting with all of you. So how's everybody doing? Great. Yeah, really appreciate everyone who reached out. Obviously, we're on the unofficial network, so we get a lot of listeners who listen to the original UUOP, and it's been so fun hearing from people and hearing your perfect days that you've sent in. It's really been cool to see the community. I got a lot of messages as well that were like, oh, could I send my perfect day or, you know, do you, would you care? Do you want to hear? And I'm like, yeah, I want to hear everybody's perfect day because it's fun to know. It's fun to dream while I'm in cold weather in Maryland. And also I'm learning a lot of new things, new favorites or food I didn't realize existed. So yeah, I've been loving it. Awesome. Well, as always, we want to start with a delicious appetizer And this episode's appetizer will be a discussion of Universal's Mardi Gras, which started last weekend. And just as a note, as of recording, we have some of the information on this year's event, but not all. If history repeats itself, Universal will probably release all the information the day after we record this. But don't fret, we promise that our March episode will be a full review of the entire event's offerings. Mardi Gras kicked off. February 3rd at Universal Orlando. This event has taken place at Universal for over 25 years. I can't believe it's 25 years. I I had no idea it had been that long. (laughs) I didn't either. I read that and I was like, what? (laughs) (laughs) And showcases a variety of food, beverage, and entertainment options, including a Mardi Gras tribute store, parade, and special concerts. These are included with the price of your theme park ticket, which is a little unbelievable. Absolutely. Yeah. When they release the concert lineups, I just, just that alone included in a theme park ticket is wild. And then just add then all the other stuff. It's, it's pretty crazy. Over the years, the event has transformed into one of the premier food festivals in the United States parks, showcasing a variety of international food options in booths throughout Universal Studios, Islands of Adventure, and CityWalk. This year's event will have food booths in 18 different locations in Universal Studios and many others yet announced throughout the resort. The event also includes special offers. This year's event included gift card discounts not typically available at the parks. Annual pass holders can receive a gift card priced at $120 with a $150 value. Other park guests can purchase a $65 card with a $75 value. These cards can be used at food stands and restaurants throughout the parks and city walk and they never expire. Additionally, preferred and premier pass holders will receive their typical food discounts when they use the gift cards, leading to even more savings. Many of us have purchased gift cards at the event and are still using them well after. That's me, Kelly. I bought so many of those last year because I spent so much money on food. It was so worth it. Universal offers a ride and dine float package, perfect for the foodie lover who also wants to have a guaranteed spot on a parade float. This year's Ride and Dine package is currently priced starting at $84.99 per person. This cost includes a three-course meal, selecting from the full menu at one of four participating restaurants at Universal Orlando Resort, then against Bar and Grill, Lombard Seafood Grill, the Cowfish Sushi Burger Bar, or MBC Sports Grill and Brew. After your meal, you then get to ride on a Mardi Gras parade float, throwing beads to guests in the park. Now, I just will give everybody a side note. This deal is not very good for people who are plant-based or vegan. None of these restaurants offer a three-course meal. If they had done twosome, we could have done that, and that would have been perfect. But alas, they did not. That's frustrating. It is. But, <laughs> yeah, I've heard nothing but amazing things about riding on Mardi Gras floats. So this will be my first Mardi Gras, you guys. So I'm <gasps> learning so just exciting. as much 
I know. Um, so <laughs> I, I, I was not included when I said many of us purchase gift cards. I was not included in that us, <laughs> but I'm really excited about this. I've heard just amazing things. And so I've, I've got questions that hopefully you guys can help me answer as I get ready for my first trip. That's awesome, Kelly. Yeah, you're going to mm-hmm. love it. This is maybe my favorite time of the year at Universal, even more than HHN. I love oh, it. Oh, that's big praise. Hot take. Uh, but Very like, hot take. <laughs> yeah, <literally>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm sure I'm going to get many listeners disagreeing with that. That's okay. <laughs> like we said, Universal gave us a bit of a teaser last week with descriptions of five of the dozens of menu items that will be featured at this year's event. I'm pausing because I'm probably going to say words incorrectly, everyone. And please message me if I say something <laughs> wrong and I'll do it better in the future. For example, Germany will feature a chicken schnitzel, which is a breaded chicken cutlet with baked cheese spatzel. The Mexico booth is bringing back the chilequiles verdes, which have pulled roasted chicken, corn tortilla, tomatillo, salsa verde. I don't know how to say that. Can Oaxaca. <laughs> That's is it. Oaxaca, I think. Oaxaca. Yeah, I think it is too. And Cotija cheese, crema mexicana. I'm almost certain that last year, this, the Mexico booth, I know this, the last year the Mexico booth wasn't labeled gluten-free. And I'm 99% sure. And I think I emailed allergies and they said it was a mistake. But afterward, like, but the people at the booth were like nervous to serve me, obviously, for understandable reasons. Mm -hmm. So I'm just going to call that out there. We'll see if they have it correct this year. But it was something that I was sad I didn't I didn't partake in. And I wish I would have emailed before. And one of the new items to taste this year can be found at the China booth, which I think China is a totally new booth, if I'm not. I believe so. I believe you're right. Yes. I don't think there's Japan this year and there is China. Mm-hmm. So kind of a switch up. Interesting. And one of the new items to taste this year can be found at the China booth, which is a totally new booth. And that is the Szechuan noodle salad. That dish is Chinese noodles, spicy black vinegar dressing, cucumbers, cilantro, scallions, and peanuts. I'm hopeful that that one's dairy-free. I'm crossing my fingers. I hope there. that one's vegan. It sounds vegan. Yeah. Crossing my fingers over here, too, I guess. <laughs> really. Uh, yeah. And then another new offering is pastelone, which will be in the Puerto Rico booth. That dish contains layers of sweet yellow plantains, picadillo beef, and idam cheese. So that, um, when I looked that up online, it it's very much so like a lasagna. Like the sweet and savory layers, it's um, layered like a lasagna dish would be. So I lost my mind when I saw this because years ago, Trader Joe's had a sample of something very similar. And then I've made my own like version. Ooh. I don't use plantains, which is a really good idea. I use um, polenta. Oh. I'm not, I don't really like Italian food and my husband's Italian. And so we like, it's one of his, the favorite dishes that I make is this like, quote, you know, what I called like a Mexican lasagna. And I was so proud of myself that I took this Trader Joe thing and whatever figured it out for us. And then I saw the picture and I was like, Mm -hmm. I've been making a dish, a Puerto Rican dish. But now I definitely want to try making the plantains. And then I'm curious to try the like Mardi Gras version and kind of like learn from my own cooking that I can like bring it home with me. So I'm dying to try that is my point. That was Tracy's number one too, by the way. She sent in her um, thoughts and ideas for the whole episode, but she said that was that she would try any of these, but that that would be the one that if they were getting to go this year, that she would have had first and foremost. And returning in all their splendor, the New Orleans food booth will feature the famous Mardi Gras staple beignets, which are a fried sweet pastry dusted with powdered sugar. That's the one item that I wish they would make vegan. <laughs> oh, I would die. <laughs> That's I another would die thing. too. <laughs> Just like I'd never had a churro until... Uh, Horror Nights, I've never had a beignet either. So I've never had a beignet either, so it would definitely be, be amazing. Oh, no, sorry. I lied. I have one at Disney, but I want one at Universal. <laughs> Madeline, do you like beignets? Yeah, and they're a staple. They should really do it mm-hmm. vegan. They Agreed. would sell a lot of them. I feel like it's like churros. They're not made worse by making them vegan, so why not? Like, just do it. 100% agree. 
And we also have some of the menu items from the hotels. Each hotel will feature specialty alcoholic beverages themed to the event. Many will also have specialty foods at their on-site restaurants. These include things like a blackened mahi po'boy at Hard Rock Hotel's Velvet Lounge, which is a blackened mahi-mahi, lettuce, tomato, onion, and Cajun roumelade on toasted French bread. Aventura's Bar 17 Bistro will add bayou shrimp and grits to the menu, which is a blend of cheddar, parmesan, and brie cheese grits topped with Cajun shrimp seasoned with our house blend of spices and Creole seasoned butter. Just a reminder, these are all subject to change before or during the event. Yeah, I think that's what we have to remember. <laughs> like, they've put out menus before and then changed them, like, before the event started. So, yeah, I think it's all been, like, a supply issue. Like, yeah. if they think, just like at HHN, when they had, for example, the Last of Us cans. Yes. Um, mm. And they ran out of them. I think they run into that sometimes. They definitely do. That makes sense. Anything we haven't talked about that you all are ex- interested in or might be safe for you to eat? Out of those things, I'm guessing the noodles would be the only thing that would be. But yeah, for I don't me know. Too. So Shelby, how <laughs> many offerings, like how many vegan offerings were there last year? Since I I haven't been to this event before, I'm, I'm trying to ballpark what I might be looking at. I think we had about 10. Oh my gosh. So yeah, yeah. They've really increased it. Um, A few years ago, we only had like a couple and then all of a sudden they just like started cranking them out. So I'm hoping it's comparable. But what they have been doing in the past couple of years is repeating like the favorite items, which is totally fine because usually their favorites are my favorites. So it's totally cool. And then adding like a couple new on top of that. Um, So yeah, I'm hoping around 10. That's awesome. I might be misquoting myself from last year and then thinking of COVID because we had a lot during the one in 2021, I think it was. Oh, and they really like did it up. And there were some modifiable ones too. Okay, that's cool. Yeah, yeah, I think how I, after my HHN experiences, and I think just with like food and wine and Festival of the Arts and things like that in the past of just feeling a little safer, even though I'm not completely vegan, like I know the vegan items are guaranteed to be dairy free. Yes. And so I think I just feel a little safer and I, I like a lot of plant-based dishes, so I'd like I'd probably prefer ordering straight off the vegan menu than trying to modify something that's at a super busy booth where yes. the workers might not be trained in the same way that like a regular food team member might if they're only festival trained. So that's very I'm true. Crossing my fingers for that. Yeah. Agreed. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Kayla, did you have a favorite item last year? I loved the Mafungo. The Puerto Rico booth apparently like is my number one booth. So let's see <laughs> if it is there next year or this year again. Our friend and listener Grace said that the elote in the Mexico booth was like the one of the best things she's ever eaten. And I think that was her bring back in her perfect oh, day. Oh, yeah. Was the elote? Yep, I think so. So they got to bring that back because I got to try it. And... Maybe that'll be my new favorite because I do love like Mexican elote. So I'm excited about that. I'm excited about the drinks at the hotels. I think there's a lot of really fun, interesting ones that aren't your typical just like sweet theme park drink because I'm not a big (laughs) sweet drinker. Um, So that was exciting to look at some of those I want to go, I want to get the Cabana, Cabana Bay, it's more words I can't say, um, <laughs> words I can't say, hurricane, and it comes in a souvenir galaxy bowl tumbler with a straw. Oh, oh wow. Fun. That sounds fantastic. <laughs> if it's big, I, I'll need you ladies to meet with me and we'll all drink from our straws in my giant galaxy bowl that won't fit in my luggage. <laughs> <laughs> Kayla, when are you going down again? You'll, you'll be down in March, right? Yeah. Okay. Second weekend in March. Will you have time in that trip to make it out to some of the hotels? Because my trip, my February trip is a split trip between um, Festival of the Arts at Epcot and Mardi Gras. So I don't see us having a lot of time to check out the hotels. But um, will you have time to do that? Yeah, I'm staying at Cabana Bay. Ah. So it should be really easy for me to get that. And then I'm going with a girlfriend. I'm going to go down a, a day early, um, depending on when my flight is on Thursday. Maybe I'll see if 
Shelby and Madeline want to meet up with me or not because it's Thursday and we have work, but maybe we'll do like a little hotel no, bar no, crawl or t- something. T- for real, <laughs> tell me tell me when and I will make it happen. Me too. Shelby okay. and I met on a weekday the other day. Yeah. <laughs> when you live in Orlando, you do weekday things, I think. Yes. <laughs> oh, it's a thing. And I just read this one, which you guys are probably going to be like, she just said she doesn't like sweet drinks. I'm particular about my sweet drinks. I don't like when they taste like f- fake or like just a lot of, um, what's that called? Like, like when it's like the mixers, when it's fake. So like, I like when it's fruity, when it has yeah. like real fruit flavor. Yeah, yeah but it, fruit it doesn't just taste like aspartame sweet yeah. and sour mix. <laughs> yes. Okay. So what I'm about to read might be, you know, not my favorite, but I feel like I really want to try it for unknown reasons. I really want to get this, even though it might not seem up my alley. It's at the Endless Summer Resort, which I've never been to. So I could see that and try this. The Voodoo Doll. Deep Eddie Sweet Tea Vodka, Blue Carousel, Melon Liqueur, and Lemonade, garnished with gummy Voodoo Doll Candy. Oh, gosh. Um, That sounds sweet. (laughs) Sounds so sweet. And it sounds so ridiculous. And I want to try it. So maybe I'll do that. I think even if our trips did overlap, I'd leave you to that one. (laughs) Also, Endless Summer is hard to get to a little. Yeah. um, Compared to the other hotels. But I still go. I've still. For living in Orlando, I have spent an insane amount of time at Dockside. Like crazy amounts of time there. So it is a great hotel to visit. Madeline, I think that you need to take me next time you go. Because like I've stayed at both of those resorts. But I don't spend that much time there. I usually go back to the park. So, you know. Yeah. I'm a big pool person. I love going to the pool. That's awesome. The the buses are really reliable for endless summer too. Like they, they I are, feel like there true. were times that I, because I stayed there in December of 2022, and I think I was worried that you know it would be too hard to get to. But there were times that I would see, you know, like three endless summer buses come in the time that it would take a bus from a different resort to come. So even though it's further away and not accessible by water taxi or walking. Um, I think it was a pretty, you know, fast way to get there. The buses were pretty reliable. I think you're right about that. Without going down too far of a tangent, on the flip side of that, the buses for the premier resorts are not reliable (laughs) because they're expecting you to use the water taxis. But when there's lightning, they don't run the water taxis. And so I've had to take the bus They combine buses for those resorts, and so it takes a lot longer because they will stop at Sapphire and Royal Pacific, and sometimes they'll do Portofino and Hard Rock. So they'll add on all of the hotels, so it's a lot slower to take the bus to those than it is to the Endless Summer resorts. There we go. Great, great tip. (laughs) I'm, I'm I'm a pro at these hotels at this point. I've spent more time at these hotels than my bank account would like, um, for sure. <laughs> okay. That's okay. I have okay. a general, so two things, a general Mardi Gras food booth question. How would you rate, rate the like portion size to the cost of everything? It's a great question. I can only speak to the vegan stuff. So you guys chime in. I was going to say, I think it is plate specific. And I know that's a complicated answer. I'm curious if Madeline and Shelby agree or disagree. And I feel like that is something that gets talked about widely. So like, and it's kind of similar to HHN, at least for me, like I felt like I heard a lot about the walking taco, that it was really delicious and it was like actually a nice amount of food. And some of them were like smaller than others. Like, and I feel like for the most part, like it doesn't really change through the season if that makes sense. So like if you heard it's, oh, this is a smaller portion, but it's still worth it. Like it's still really good or really unique. Um, But just like go with the expectation that it's not, maybe you would have, you know, for the money you would have wanted a little bit more, but it's still worth it. Or, you know, no, this wasn't worth it at all. You didn't really get a lot and it wasn't that unique or special. So I think that's a complex answer. <laughs> and then I think for the most part, I never felt like angry about the serving size. Mm. Some were just better than others. So maybe then my my small answer is 
more on the, you get a nice amount of food for the cost. Yeah, I would agree with that. Just referencing something I ate a, quite a few times last year were the seafood boils, which I think are pretty popular. The crawfish boil and the shrimp boil, which are just like standard Mardi Gras food. And those were typically priced at a similar price point to like one dish at a quick service restaurant. So like a burger or something like that, which I think they're slightly smaller than what you might get at a quick service restaurant, but you're also paying for a higher degree of food, Mm -hmm. like a higher caliber Mm -hmm. food item. So to me, I think that they're worth it. Um, And the same goes for the drinks. I think the drinks can sometimes be a little bit more expensive than what you might get somewhere else, but there's also deals. So you can get like a blinky cup and then the refills on that blinky cup are a lot cheaper than the first drink that you get. So if you're stacking the Mardi Gras gift card discounts with your annual pass discounts, with the Blinky Cup discounts, you know, it starts to add up, which is different than Disney, where you don't get annual pass discounts at the food booths. So it is, I think, mm-hmm. a better deal than competitors. I would also agree with the with the vegan items. I feel like they're really, per, like the price is very proportional to okay. the amount of food that you get. Cool. Um, it definitely depends on the item, of course. Um, last year, we had like a purple sticky rice from the Indonesia booth that... I mean, it didn't look like a lot of food, but once you ate it, you were yeah. definitely full. Like you should probably share it if you're going to plan on eating something else. You know what I mean? So I agree. I think it just definitely depends on the item. Okay, cool. And then also when I was doing research for this episode, I dug up in like very fine print on the website that the Curse Coconut Club is coming back this year. But it also mentioned something called the after party at Pat O'Brien's. Does anyone know anything about that or has that been a thing before? <laughs> I've never heard of that before. But I don't go like to after parties, so I may just be out of the loop. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> um, I know they do special since Pat O'Brien's is year round themed after Mardi Gras. They do special events there. I have not personally gone. It's hard because it's at the same time that other stuff is going on. So I haven't gone out of my way to go there. But I will say it gets extra rowdy um, at Pat O'Brien's because it is year round themed like Mardi Gras. Good to know. Yeah, I'm really hoping to get to Curse Coconut Club this time after the like debacle of trying to get to any of the other coconut clubs the last couple of (laughs) visits where it just seemed like any time we went, it was closed for some reason or another. So I am hoping to get there. I really liked it last year. I thought the upstairs was really, really cool. It was like swampy. And I I thought it was very different than other. Yeah, even like, huh. I felt like it was a little spooky, but it was definitely different than HHN. It was, okay. it was neat. Very cool. In the month of February, this is a serious deep cut, but they rent out the resort a lot. I know, for example, for Megacon, they're renting out um, Islands of Adventure and another friend of mine is coming for a convention and they're renting out um, Mm -hmm. the park for that. And that is what prevents the Coconut Club from being open when they rent out the parks. And because February is a traditionally slower month, it does get rented out more frequently in the month of February. Oh, good to know. Yeah, uh, that makes a lot of sense because I noticed some really weird hours when I was looking at pricing out my trip. Should we rent out the parks for just us? I mean, (laughs) I'm a teacher, so, you know, my salary is like (laughs) they could cover all of us easily. So (laughs) maybe my entire career (laughs) salary put together would be able to do that. But that's not I can't contribute to that anytime soon. Yeah, it's a little crazy. Um, But yeah, any other thoughts on Mardi Gras before we move on? I had a note from Tracy that they've been to Mardi Gras once. And at the time, she wasn't a big lover of anything seafood. And so I think that's a good point to bring up for people because seafood can be a pretty divisive food group. And it's one of the top eight or top nine now major allergens. And so just that there are a lot like Cajun food is very heavy in shrimp and things like that, um, fish and all sorts of seafood. So just making a note of that, that there's probably a lot of options that you won't be able to eat if you have a seafood allergy or you don't enjoy it. But there are other things too. Um, Tracy mentioned that she tried the cauliflower dirty rice and it was not her favorite, but that she really liked the king cake and that her main takeaway was that her main memory of the weekend was flinging beads off the 
parade route and how much fun that was. So she can't remember much else as far as the food goes, because that was so much fun. I feel like the with all the different countries, and maybe that's where it's helpful for just all the different allergens that I'm trying to to think. Like I don't remember there being a ton of seafood. The as Madeline said, like the the seafood boils were in the New Orleans booths. But there's like a there's a ton okay. for everyone. Well, I was also going to mention if you do have a seafood allergy, from my experience, and I doubt they'll change this now, but for the most part, I don't think those items are at the same booth as the vegan items. Like where um, in uh, is it Battery Park? Somewhere I'm thinking across from Mel's is it Battery Park? I get I was, right park I name? consider myself a universal expert and I still cannot keep any of the parks straight. <laughs> I get Gramercy and Battery mixed up, so I'm like I don't know which one it is. Whatever's across from Mel's, wherever they do have the seafood boil, and that's typically where it is. Don't ask how I know that. I don't know. <laughs> Usually we don't have an item there, so okay. I don't think that cross contamination for someone who has a seafood allergy will be an issue. I don't. Oh, think. that's good to know. So. I mean, we'll see once the, you know, the menus come out and everything, but. Yeah. And again, Tracy's reflections were from February of 2020 when they were there. So there might, that might've been a year that had a lot more seafood options. I know a lot of the stuff that's been announced for the hotels is very seafood based, but yeah, that's a good point that a lot of the international ones might not necessarily have that as their like main staple. I'm glad you just said when she was here, because I was like, they've only had that cauliflower dirty rice twice. And yep. one was during COVID. <laughs> yep. What is everyone's number one if, of the concert, even if you're not going to go to it, but just what concert would be your favorite as your favorite in the lineup? Oh, that's a good question. I would love to see quite a few of these folks. I will see none of them for the record because that grass is horrific <laughs> to stand on. I just oh. <laughs> cannot stand on that turf. Kayla knows I ditched her last year and that's a, that's a story for another. I could do a whole podcast about the events that transpired as a result of me ditching Kayla at the concert last year. But I would love to see DJ Khaled because he's hilarious. And I can just imagine how stupid and funny that's going to be. But I also would love to see uh, some of the more like millennial bands like Bare Naked Ladies is performing, which they've performed in the past. I would love to see. That's like a great live band to see. So that would probably be my number one. But again, I will not go to a single concert. So if you're my friend and you're listening, I'm sorry. It's not happening. <laughs> I was going to also pick Bare Naked Ladies too, but I, I committed to something a while ago that's that night. And I'm like, man. Now I'm not I'm probably going to see any concerts either. <laughs> My number one is Zed. I've seen Zed in a music festival and it was awesome. And it's kind of, I was between DJ Khaled and Zed for similar reasons of, I feel like indulging in the Mardi Gras drinks, like getting a nice tipsy and seeing like a party <laughs> show <laughs> like Zed or DJ Khaled, like having, or I'll just, I'm going to stick with my Zed, having a EDM DJ with lights in Universal with Rip Rocket going on in the background and just like fist pumping. Like it just seems (laughs) so silly and fun. And that's what I would pick. Uh, Maybe we all should have planned our trip around the Bare Naked Ladies (laughs) night then, because that would be a top one for me. I do like country music. So like I wouldn't mind seeing L King or Walker Hayes, but I think my number one would probably be Queen Latifah because I just feel like she would bring the house down. Like that would just be really funny to watch. But yeah, also not going to see any of these just based off of when I'm there. Like it's not going to happen. I love it. Well, um, hopefully I break my rule and I go see one because that does sound pretty fun, Kayla, going to see like a techno type would be more fun than I don't know, a different band. Last year, I ditched you for Three Doors Down, which was apparently the best concert anyone's ever seen afterward. Oh, yeah, it was not the best concert. It was very good. I was I was going to quick say, so for anyone looking to do a concert, it is a commitment. You have to, oh, what time does it start? Whenever it starts, you're recommended to get there a minimum of an hour early because it does reach capacity. And then when it reaches capacity, you can't get in, uh, reaches your capacity. Um, And they have like security and stuff up. It is on either like the turf or the hard. There's like the concrete, Mm -hmm. whatever, like also. So it's like not the best. It's not the most comfortable place to just like sit and hang out or whatever. 
However, it was really, really neat. Like I did it last year of, I was interested in the band and then I didn't know if I'd ever really care, which this year I don't really know the band very much. It's the Ava Max. Mm -hmm. Um, So like, I'm happy I did it with three doors down and it was like, when am I ever going to do this again? And I ultimately thought it was worth it, but I also go to Universal often. So like I'm going with a friend of mine that hasn't gone, she hasn't ridden Hagrid and she's a huge Harry Potter fan. So like, yeah, we're not going to spend the hours to see the concert. So that's just a little advice. If you're, you know, thinking about the concert, just know it is a time commitment. And obviously time commitment at Universal means you're spending less time eating the food, riding the rides, you know, all the things. But Three Doors Down was really fun. Awesome. Thank you, Kayla. And last thing I'll just add, make sure to check your pass because some passes yes. get blocked out during Mardi Gras. That's a good tip. Great. Well, I hope you all enjoyed that Mardi Gras appetizer. Now it's time for your entrees. For today's episode, we will be telling you about our favorite cold weather food as well as cold weather tips and tricks to better enjoy the parks on those colder days. So I'm going to start us with Shelby. I'm struggling with this, guys. <laughs> There's like too many warm things that I could tell people to eat. Maybe pick a top couple to like really get into. And then at the end, we can all run through like an honorable mentions list because I had that's, several. That's a good idea. Um, okay. So probably my first one would be the vegan shepherd's pie at Finnegan's. Also going there for the atmosphere because it's just a great place to go. Um, and you can go sit down and get out of the cold weather. That would be my cold weather tip. Go and sit in Finnegan's for a while, <laughs> eat a vegan shepherd's pie, have some drinks. Which is also gluten-free. I'm jumping in. Yes, it is Ooh. also gluten-free. You're right, Kayla. Thank you. That's oh, I always like to mention that, and I didn't this time. <laughs> and then I would maybe say, like, I know this is going to sound kind of dumb, and I don't know, maybe a jacket potato from the London Taxi Hut would be my other item that warms me up during the cold days. I actually had one the other day. Now, obviously, you can't go eat that inside, but I always like to take that and either walk through London or go into Diagon Alley where it's sometimes a little warmer. You can go in the shops and stuff too, but just so you guys know, you the only toppings we have for vegan is broccoli and beans and then just ask for no butter. And I know it mm. sounds dumb, but like put some pepper and salt on it. And it's, it's really good. Like the beans are flavored very nicely and the broccoli is always cooked perfectly. So those would probably be my two food items. Yeah, no, I assumed that someone would have the jacket potato on their list because yeah, of I how probably often, stole it. Yeah, well, because of how <laughs> often it gets talked about as like a who wants a baked potato on a hot theme park day. Exactly. But, but there um, are some days. <laughs> yeah, it might be good too for us to all come up with like a hot weather beverage too, whether like alcoholic or not, like something you like to drink when it's chilly outside, because it really does Mm -hmm. get chilly at the park. Sometimes I know it was really cold just this past week. And I also I know there's absolutely no way to scientifically prove this. But I feel like hot weather in theme parks is hotter than hot anywhere else, if that makes sense. In cold theme parks are colder, like 90 degrees in a theme park is the hottest 90 degrees you can possibly experience. And 30 degrees in a theme park is absolutely the coldest 30 degrees that you can experience like even having lived in the Midwest where like it's actively snowing right now and I'm worried I'm gonna have to like cross-country ski to get to the airport (laughs) next week but some of the coldest times I've ever had was like in February that I don't know how I was there in February when it wasn't Mardi Gras but it was that happened you know standing to watch the Lagoon show like that theme park cold is colder than you would anticipate it being especially if you're not from Florida. I definitely agree. And I am from here. So. <laughs> my first Grinch miss with my husband, it was a very magical trip. A lot of like really great things happened. One of them was that it was really cold. We did not plan for it. And I had been thinking about getting the pygmy puff robe for like a while. And it was like, this is it. This is the moment. And so <laughs> that sounds I, like fate. I got it. <laughs> And like you guys know, I wore it. I wore it around the park and we went to Cowfish and I ordered rosé 
And I, there's the most, <laughs> my favorite picture of me, I'm in a public restaurant drinking rosé in a pick me puff robe. And I just looked ridiculous, but it was like one of the most fun, silly, like times of my adult life. Like w- whenever we, if we see cowfish or like if I wear the robe, you know, like a normal human after a shower or something in my house, like I can't not smile and like think about it and yeah. all because it was cold in a theme park and I needed it. And instead of buying a hoodie, cause I have so many hoodies and stuff, I like got the thing I really wanted and warm myself up. You're absolutely going to need to post that picture on our Instagram after this yep. episode Agreed. comes I out need, now. Yeah. <laughs> Agreed. I love it. Kayla. One of my favorite memories is right after I met you, you came to visit with Mark and you didn't learn from your pygmy puff incident because you also didn't have a sweatshirt this time. <laughs> Oh, no. <laughs> I, I uh, brought you one of my coworkers who's very sweet, was super optimistic and thought I was a size like medium or something and made me this really beautiful Harry Potter sweatshirt that says, I solemnly swear I'm up to no good. That does not fit me. And so when you said you needed a sweatshirt, I was like, I have the perfect sweatshirt in mind and brought it for you. So that was a good memory of our beginning of our friendship. Well, that too, like just that triggered a memory, Madeline, that you just said of our friend Kevin bringing all the like dry clothes that he happened to have in his car the day that we all got soaking wet in a like torrential downpour. But it could be the middle of summer and you get wet on Popeyes or on um, Jurassic Park or Dudley Do Right or just from Mother Nature, you end up soaking wet. If you go into a restaurant, they have the air conditioning jacked down to like negative 412 <laughs> degrees. And it's really cold. So these tips are not just for cold weather time, but for a time that you might happen to find yourself wanting either something extra warm to warm up your belly or like comfort food if you're wanting more of one of those heavier meals. I think these could be really useful. Agree completely, Kelly. Kayla, it's your turn. What are your uh, cold weather food or tips and tricks? So the easiest thing for me, the number one thing I do is a hot butter beer. It's my favorite butter beer all the time. Even when it's really hot out, I can get myself to drink a hot butter beer because I enjoy it so much. So when it's cold or cool, or I'm just cold, if it, it, Kelly is 100% right, the amount of times, especially at Mythos, which I love Mythos, but man, yeah, do they make that place cold? And I am like literally shaking. Yeah, Mythos and Confisco are the two biggest culprits in my opinion. Yeah. So hot butter beer is my number one tip. Food wise, this is really interesting. The Minion Cafe that I've raved about on, I think I raved about it on the first one. If not on first episode, you're going to hear a lot about Minion Cafe. I'm actually going to talk about my least favorite thing I've had thus far, which is only saying how great Minions is, which is that. El Macho Salsa y Salsa Ropa Vieja. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah. So I, I think why I'm not the biggest red meat fan. So oh, like, yeah, then that would not yeah. be your favorite. We're going into this of like, I knew that and I had heard really great things and I was like, oh, I'll try it. And I was like, oh, this is good. It's just not my like particular favorite for my taste book, but it's still really good. And I just, yeah, I thought... It, it's warm. I, Kelly, like, do you? Agree? I was curious if this is like considered like a comfort food or like warm. Like, would you agree? Would you think this is a good thing to eat if it's cool out? Yeah, that it actually would have been really high up. It's on my honorable mentions list, and it would have been higher up had I not mentioned it as part of my perfect day. I wanted to kind of show that I eat more than the same three things over and over again at the parks. But definitely, I mean. Ropa Vieja is like such a comfort food in general. That's like the dish that your old Cuban grandma makes when you're sick or if it's cold outside sort of thing. So I'd say by its nature, like it, it is a stew that is served over rice. And so I would absolutely say that's a comfort and or cold, even though it's got like the cold salsa and the cold um, like cucumber tomato salad. It's definitely a comfort food. Okay. Well, then that was my number one. My second one is Thunderfall Terrace. There's a number of items. And I actually went there with Madeline and got ribs for the first time, which again, I'm not a big red meat eater. 
Um, but I was trying to, I'm trying to try new things, especially being on a food podcast. And I loved the food here. There's a ton of gluten-free options. And I didn't think that the portion sizes, I, I think sometimes I get nervous about, um, especially with being in a theme park and riding rides, I don't mm-hmm. necessarily want like a super full tummy because I don't, I don't want to barf. <laughs> and I, I think <laughs> that would be good to not do in a theme park yeah. or yeah. anywhere. <laughs> and I think that was something that like stopped me from getting something like chicken and ribs combo. Yeah. But I thought it was like a nice amount of food and like, it wasn't small either. So I hope it doesn't sound like, oh, it's whatever this like puny meal. Like it was an appropriate size, really, really delicious. I have so many moments. I'm going to say it again. I know I said it in the the first episode of like, I forget I'm in a theme park. Like the food Mm -hmm. is so, all of everything is just so good. And it's like, wait, like there's a roller coaster right next to me. And I'm in a theme park. Like, this is wild. I, t- I feel like I'm in like a really amazing restaurant that's like, you know, in a foodie city. So yeah, Thunder Falls is amazing. Like everything that's great about Minion Cafe is also great about Thunder Falls. It's very easy to order from the table. They have really fun theming, including really amazing dinosaur light fixtures. Lots of cool stuff in Thunder Falls. And kind of a fun tip is that if you sit down and you just want to have a beverage and it's either really cold or really hot. So for example, I was at the AP night over the summer. It was extremely hot outside. Um, You can just sit down and order one drink at a table and they have really great food runners there. I would say my personal opinion is that if you're between Thunder Falls and Burger Digs, pick Thunder Falls. Both the ambiance as a result of not having a store in there and the food I think is better. When, when me and Madeline were there, speaking of theming, there was a waiter. At first, we thought it was just like a guy that was really into dinosaurs, but we f- it was a waiter and he had a little dinosaur on his shoulder. Yeah. And he was like, like the dinosaur was like, like talking to the kids, I think a little like he was like playing. He was like a character in the, in the restaurant. We watched him for a good 15 minutes and I've never seen something like that. It was amazing. Really fun. The last restaurant that I'm going to bring up, I thought, again, I questioned it because it's in Volcano Bay. And I'm like, are you there? When you're there, are you going to need something to warm you up? (laughs) And I don't know. If If you're in a pinch, the coconut curry chicken, it's really, really delicious. It's one of my favorite meals on Universal Property. So if it's a little, if if you are brave enough to go on like a cooler day and want some that like warm and yummy gluten-free stuff, the coconut curry chicken is really good. And then for tips and tricks, Mark and I went for Grinchmas for the his second time since that first magical time. It was going to be four years later. And we planned one day and it was a giant monsoon and it was really cold. Um, and so, and like the parade was canceled, like we got to see the Grinchmas show and we got to see the Hogwarts show, which I could not, I did not believe they were going to put it on and I didn't believe that it would have fireworks. Um, but it did. So if it's raining and you really want to see it, um, I would ask a team member and I like, I, I cry every time I see that show, but I was like, I cried of like, I I just, I'm so thankful. Like this, this show means so much to me. I don't know why it just brings out this emotion. And it felt really special that Universal went above and beyond to like still put it on. We didn't meet Earl. We stood, it was like drizzling and we stood in a spot where he was supposed to be and he never showed up. Oh, and <laughs> so that was sad. I was mad at Earl, but then it was like, okay, I guess you're fine. So we obviously, you know, we knew this in advance. We knew pretty much week of. And then the day before it was just like, a, hey, we need to set different expectations. We set expectations of like, maybe we won't really get to do anything holiday. And so we actually plan to do a like food and drink tour. <laughs> which really works for this podcast as well. So instead of like, you know, typically we want to go really fast so we can like, we would get, we'd each get something different at Today Cafe, eat it, and then, you know, go ride rides, whatever. 
it was like, oh, we'll get one thing at Today Cafe and split it. And then we'll go to Cafe La Bamba and get something there. And like, we got some small things. Yeah, that's a great idea. Yeah. I mean, we still got wet. There's a bit of walking around, but it was really, it was really, really fun. And then like, we were, we tried to like plan things when there were breaks in the rain. Like we went over and we did cowfish. We did a couple city walk bars. I think we sat at Cowfish for a while and had some really good drinks there. So yeah, like doing a, a food and drink tour, you know, Epcot gets all the mm-hmm. all the talk, but Universal has some pretty neat um, drinks and food. Not gluten-free, but I mean, one of our listeners, Grace, talked about doing a craft beer crawl and having all the Universal-only beers Oh, in like a day. And that's, yeah. So yeah. I think like just setting different expectations. It's e- and then there's also like indoor attractions. Studios has more indoor attractions. So maybe doing that like planning a little food drink tour in studios and also then you can go into Jason Bourne show, go into horror makeup show and yeah. Love it, Kayla. Thank you for sharing. Moving over to Kelly, who also has some of Tracy's tips. Yeah. First of all, Kayla, get out of my brain because Thunder Falls Terrace was my one of my top choices. So you've now stolen one of my actual items and my number one backup item. But so I'll just echo what you said about Thunder Falls. It's pricier for in comparison to some of the other quick service foods, but you get a lot of food. I would actually say that Especially if you got like an additional side, this would almost be something you could split with someone if you were wanting like a filling lunch, but didn't want to get too full. My favorite is the um, rotisserie chicken and the roasted pork pernil uh, combo or not the combo, the plate. The combo is also a great deal, but it comes with a milkshake. And if you're cold, you probably don't want a milkshake. And if you're me, you can't have a milkshake. So I stay away from the combo, but the combo is probably one of the best deals that you can get from a quick service restaurant at Universal. But yeah, like it's just really good. So it comes with um, a good sized portion of the rotisserie chicken, which is always I've only had it where it's tender and not and super flavorful, like it's not dry at all. That like the pork pernil in Thunder Falls has no business being that good as like a quick service in a theme park like you just said Kayla that it's really really tasty but my I think my number one comfort food I'd also posted on Instagram one of the days that it was really cold last week is over at Amatista's at Sapphire Falls is the seafood arroz caldoso and so it's like a seafood stew and it has rice shrimp mussels clams chorizo, aromatic seafood broth, and Cuban sofrito. And I like shrimp. I'm not a huge fan of mussels and clams. And so I usually ask for it without that. So I'll get like extra shrimp and chorizo and take out the clams and the mussels. But it's this giant like vat. I don't know how else to describe it. It comes in like, I think it comes in like a little cast iron skillet almost of this really rich um, stew that's a little bit spicy and has just incredible flavor and it's so delicious. They also at Amatistas have dairy-free black bean and chorizo soup that also is also served with rice. So it, I wouldn't recommend getting both of those, like the, the soup as your appetizer and the caldozo as your meal, just because that's a lot of food that's pretty similar to each other. But Amatistas definitely has some good stuff. A drink for me is a little bit more challenging. Like, you know, most of the restaurants will have hot coffee or tea that you can order right off the menu. I have had a harder time finding decaf coffee. So especially at restaurants that maybe have a smaller kitchen, that's um, a little bit more challenging to find. So if you're wanting coffee in the evening or at night, that's a little bit trickier, but if I'm going for like a warm me up from the inside out beverage, I'll sometimes get like an old fashioned or some other bourbon or whiskey drink. I had one at Confisco. The like like I talked about with water rides, I'd ridden Popeyes with our friends uh, Tyler and Kevin, and we ended up at Confisco, and we were basically the only people in the entire restaurant. So not only was the AC blasting, but it was blasting only on us. And Confisco is not a great place. Like their menu is so like light and fresh overall, um, at least what I can eat that their 
you know, I love the ahi tuna nachos, but I was so cold that they weren't nearly as enjoyable as they usually are. But I got a like bourbon based drink that was really yummy. And as far as my tip would go um, is to bring an extra layer for the like early mornings or late nights like it does. Like I said, it gets colder than you would anticipate in a theme park. And I think, you know, especially if you're leaving in the middle of the day and it's like it feels like it's 80 degrees outside in December right now, like I don't need a jacket. It might get down to like 60 that night, but the feels like is closer to 50 and you're going to want something light with you just in case. And then this is also kind of just a like personal PSA that I say anytime I'm having friends go to the parks. But even if it's cold outside, like you can still get sunburnt people. (laughs) So like, please wear sunscreen if you're going to be outside in the sun all day, even if it's December. I can't tell you how many of my like Midwestern friends are like, oh, we're going in February. It'll be beautiful. And they go in their tank tops because it's, you know, negative 12 degrees here and they come back looking like a crab. Yeah, that's, does anyone have any comments about that before I move on to Tracy's list? Um, Kelly, I was just going to mention, I mean, I was going to, I know we we're going to probably go back to me for a second, but as far as like non-dairy drinks go, you can go to Starbucks and get hot chocolate made vegan. That's right. Yeah. So that is yes. another option. If you're not like a coffee drinker or anything like that, um, you can just get it with your non-dairy milk of choice and then no whip. That's so. yes. That's a great point because I I don't think about going to Starbucks when I go. I don't either. I, but <laughs> if someone else wanted to go and wanted something yep. warm and sweet, that's a great tip. This is a weird tip. I think it was a little bit with that. The overall like weather. And I'm curious if anyone else, anyone else has had this experience. So riding the water rides, I went in January. So like it's in the cooler months. Um, it was warmer in the day. It was sunny. And so we rode Dudley and the first splash of the water, the water was insane. So ah. cold, like ice. <laughs> oh, jeez. And I mean, I'm assuming it's just because like the, the weather, like typically the water is a decent you know, not that noticeable because Florida is so hot. Right. Right. So like it should have, I should have known, but I didn't. And also the people in my log, I don't think knew because we all were like, Oh my God, (laughs) which I, I thought it was fun and funny and mini tip. If you could wear waterproof clothes or like the dry wicking, like I was only wet for a little bit of time because I was dressed like that. But yeah, even if it's a warm day, if like it had been cool the rest of the week, that water is going to be insane and just know it. And you can't be mad at Universal <laughs> if you get really, really cold. That's a, that's a great tip. Also, don't be mad at Universal when the water rides are closed or yeah. Volcano Bay is closed and it's 45 degrees outside because they do that. They will close yeah. the water park and they will close the, they actually close the water rides for significant periods of time in the winter to refurbish them but Mm -hmm. also Volcano Bay. It makes sense. Yes, it does. Kelly, do you have any tips from Tracy? Yes. So her, I'm going to read her tip first because it was a great idea. She suggests to grab a hot beverage from somewhere like Today Cafe and go into the Race Through New York queue because there's not many places indoors where you can just hang out and warm up with a beverage. Like a lot of the queues, like once you get inside for certain rides, you have to dump your drinks and things like that. Um, But in the... Uh, you know, today's studio, like you can, uh, there's the seating up there and you can catch the ragtime gals and hashtag the panda. And she said that they hung out in there for over an hour just to like warm up with the beverage before. So I thought that was a really good tip. I don't, you know, most of the time it's like if it's a risk getting a drink and then immediately getting in line for a ride, because even if something's posted at 45 minutes, like I've been in line for the mummy before where it was posted for 45 minutes and I waited like 15 And it was like, okay, so even if I would have been able to keep my drink through the line, I'd have to chug it faster than I wanted to. But you're in no rush at Race Through New York. No one's making you get into the attraction any faster, things like that. So I loved that tip. And then as far as food goes, uh, her top recommendation is the knife, fork, and spoon grilled cheese from Mythos that you get, you know, the tomato soup and the grilled cheese. And that just, you know, I obviously can't have grilled cheese, but that 
to me sounds like the definition of comfort food of like what you'd eat when you were homesick or something like that. And then Viva was another recommendation of hers, which I know is on it's on my list of places to try. But Italian is like the definition of good comfort food. She said Louis pizza has big slices and it's very hot and filling. And then the Leaky Cauldron has the beef, lamb and Guinness stew, which comes in a bread bowl. And that just sounds fantastic. I wish I could eat all of those things. Yeah, it sounds delicious. Um, especially the grilled cheese at Mythos is like a crowd favorite, fan favorite. People love mm-hmm. that. So yeah, that's a great tip. Um, and just to be inside. So that's awesome. All right, Madeline, that's that's you then. All right, team, you can't stop me. I'm taking lots of creative liberties here. So there's there no stop now. I'm going to paint a picture for you. It's 50 degrees outside. You are from Michigan like me. And you look at your weather app and you're like, oh, this isn't so bad. Like I've seen a football game in this weather. You're wrong. It's freezing. Put on your coat. It is cold. Just like Kelly said, it's cold when it's 50 degrees in Florida because it's more humid and there's often wind. So I would suggest I have a long parka I wear that looks crazy, um, but I'm always happy. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I would suggest that. Um, I'm sending you somewhere you might not think of. I'm sending you to the San Francisco Pastry Company because Hmm. it never has a line. I shouldn't say never. I have seen lines there, but it frequently does not have a line. It's kind of hidden. They have great warm drinks there. They can do espresso beverages as well as coffee. So you can get a variety of different drinks there. Um, You can customize them. They make them in-house. So you can get different custom drinks. I'm sorry, I don't know about the vegan options there. So I'm not sure what it looks like. I know they have vegan food, Drink wise, yes. I'm not sure. I can't even picture where this is. I'm sorry. I educate me, enlighten me. Yeah, it's by the wharf. It's right across from the train station ish in mm-hmm. studios. It's a it's next door to the candy store, right? The San Fran candy store? Or no? It's like across yeah, it's across sort the of. walkway. It's right, I mean it's connected to Lombards. Okay, There's okay. That's it. So if you I walk past yep. if you go to Lombards, you're walking past it. You had to have gone to the Coke Freestyle. That's like right there. Okay. Yes. Yep. Yes. There we go. <laughs> I know. I know where we are now. Thank yeah. you. Um cool. Well, maybe someone else didn't know too. Ooh, maybe a listener didn't know either, which is the hope. Um and they have really fun pastries themed after the season. So they'll typically get a pastry for HHN or they'll get one for Mardi Gras or, you know, whatever that looks like. So they'll have different pastries as well. Um, so I would suggest getting a pastry and a coffee for a, t- a snack type warm up because the the carbs will make you feel a lot warmer. I've done this before and it's it's a really nice cold weather thing to do. And then you're right by Diagon Alley and you can walk through um, and see the shops. It frequently empties out, especially on weeknights in the off season, uh, because it's cold out and people don't want to be outside. So especially once the sun sets, that's a great time to go there. So yeah, that would be my first uh, tip. And just to so everyone knows my day, I'm getting fully caffeinated coffee, because I'm about to battle these crowds in Diagon Alley, and I'm just not sleeping tonight. So that is my first tip. And then the next night, oh, no, it's freezing again. Can I wait? Can I jump in? I just looked up the um. There's vegan elderberry croissant. Yes, they have vegan croissants. Uh, other options too, Shelby. Right? Yes, they do. It's usually just the vegan elderberry. Sometimes they put the regular vegan croissant in there, but it's hit or miss. The elderberry is almost always there. Yeah. Hmm. Is that good? Have you ever had it? Oh yeah, I've had it a bunch of times. <laughs> it's really good. It is the one at the pastry company the same as the today cafe elderberry yeah, croissant? it's all the same okay. across the the two parks so you can get that at san francisco pastry company today's cafe and usually at croissant moon bakery as well okay yeah they're all the same um ask for it to be warmed for like seven seconds and it's perfect Ooh. seven seconds <laughs> it's, it's oddly specific perfect. but any more than that it's like too hot and you can't eat it you know but like seven seconds is like just warm enough amazing <laughs> yeah, that's a great tip. And there's a lot of great places to sit around there outside. Um, there's not really seating inside, so that's not going to be your friend. But outside, there is a good number of places to sit. So it's a good place to hang out if you um, want to take a break for a second, for sure. Uh, and then um, I was saying before, if you go another night and it's freezing again and you want to go to islands, um, I love getting a beer at the Hogshead 
Uh, maybe getting food there as well if you're hungry. So they have a lot of good cold weather food. I'm a big fan of getting the kids fish and chips because it's a smaller portion and it's much cheaper. It's about half the cost. Now it really is about half the portion. So something to keep in mind. Um, But I love the fish and chips there. And then it's the best to ride Hagrid's at night. It's It runs pretty much. It can get too cold to run Hagrid's, but it runs when it's pretty cold outside. Um, and if you sit in the sidecar, you'll feel like you're Harry Potter from um, when Hagrid's taking him. So yeah, why not? So much fun um, in the cold. It's the best, in my opinion, best ride to do in the cold. So the the last trip that was a monsoon or whatever, not so weather, there was no line because it was so cold and wet. Um, I mean, basically uh, almost everything, like almost everyone had left. So Hagrid was a walk on and Mark was like, no, like, I'm sorry, Kayla, I, I don't want to ride it. I'm, I'm cold and whatever. So I just walked on and rode it. It was amazing. There was something with like the cold and the rain. It made it, I, I don't know, it made it more thrilling. And maybe that's like what yeah. I don't think Hagrid has like, Velocicoaster is more thrilling and Hagrid is really, it's my favorite ride. It's really themed and it's just really neat. But like the missing component is whatever thrill and getting pelted with cold rain. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, I didn't, I didn't know I needed that in my life. And then when it was over and like whatever strangers next to me in the sidecar, we were just like, all grin like oh my god that was so fun like that was so different so i don't know what it is about hagrid exactly like in the in the cold is like it's really neat it's really neat yeah it's the best time to ride it for sure is when it's cold out yeah i i agree with that it feels more authentic when it's cold you feel like you're really in england versus being in half <laughs> and then my last one is a surprise my surprise tip, we're coming out with this episode right before Super Bowl. So I'm going to give you a Super Bowl tip. Um, if you want to watch the Super Bowl and enjoy some good food, I would suggest the NBC Grill in City Walk for the brisket dinner, which I had recently when I watched the Michigan game in City Walk, um, the Michigan championship uh, football game I watched there in January. It's a really great place to catch a game. Um, So I would suggest going in there. Of course, you're getting out of the cold. You're enjoying some good food. It's a good place to watch uh, the Super Bowl. You know, your family dragged you on this vacation in the middle of the most important football game. So you want to go watch it somewhere. And that's a great place to watch it. You'll have to get there really early, though, just as a don't think you're rocking up at at kickoff and getting a table for big sporting events in, in my experience. Yeah, least, that's but. a good point. I am not as familiar with the tables itself. I would suggest making a reservation if you want a table. I am yeah. always a bar sitter. So I always okay. sit at the bar, which is also, Kelly makes a really good point. Like, don't get there. Get there an hour early, for sure. Um, and you'll see signage for the Super Bowl if you're there for that event or any big sporting event. You'll see signage. They will tell you what they're doing at that restaurant for the event. So, um, look at that. But yeah, that would be that would be my recommendation. Definitely agree with you, Kelly. You have to get there early. Yeah, that is everything that I had for my tips. So send it over to you, uh, Shelby. Oh, yes. I supposed to have one more tip. OK, so <laughs> I do have one, but it is a drink. So I'm sorry that we talked about a lot of drinks, but um, fire whiskey in in uh, Diagonale. Mm-hmm. I think it's in it's in Hogsmeade, too, right? Yes. I've only had it in Diagon Alley. So, so that's vegan. That will warm you right up on a cold day. <laughs> Get a double of that. You'll be good to go. <laughs> Eat first, please. Not, <laughs> not for anyone under 21. <laughs> Let me put the PSA in there. Obviously, yes. We do not condone <laughs> <laughs> underage drinking. Any of the good. things associated with alcohol <laughs> that are negative. <laughs> but yeah, that, that would be my other tip. I honestly, I like the cold and out. Not 90% of the time, but maybe 70% of the time, except for when my current husband will tell me to wear pants outside, I will be in shorts. And I'm a Floridian. I love the cold weather. Like I'm I'm down to go outside when it's cold. So I don't really have any of those tips like go hide in this place. So I'm like, I don't know, I'm outside. <laughs> so yeah, that's it. I, I, whiskey. I think some. a theme in general is just 
you know, say like I spend the majority of the time that I'm in a theme park is summer based off of my schedule and things like that. So all the places that you walk past thinking I would never eat that when it's 90 degrees outside, that's the Mm -hmm. perfect time to try some of those. Like I want to go back to Finnegan's and Lombard's and like I think I described on one, either the UUOP episode or our last episode of like having negative experiences when I was really young at Finnegan's and Lombard's, but they are both places that I would want to try again. But the main reason I haven't given them a chance yet is that I don't know that I want vegan chicken Alfredo if I'm about to go get on Velocicoaster. I don't know that That's I want point. shepherd's pie if it's 150 degrees outside. So all those places that you think like, I would never eat that in a theme park. If it's cold or you're wanting comfort food or even, honestly, I meant to say this earlier, like these are great tips too if you get on your vacation that you're long awaited for and you wake up with a cold the first day that you're there. (laughs) Like maybe that's just because I'm I'm sick right now. But like I've definitely been on vacation where day two I wake up with a sore throat and a runny nose, things like that. And it's like getting some of these more comfort food items or things that'll kind of warm you up or fill you up it's good to know if you end up having a sick day in one of the parks too to kind of keep you going I really something else that's on my list of something that I wanted to try um, are the ramen bowls from comic strip cafe oh yes I just again have not been they're a new ish addition to the menu um, and I haven't been at a time where I either didn't want something else more or the weather felt great for getting a bowl of ramen in the middle of the day so Definitely want to try those. I think they're all either all already dairy free or can easily be made dairy free. And I know there's a vegan option too. So yes, there is. And I've eaten that when it's 90 degrees. It's not that fun. I'll be <laughs> honest. I mean, I still did it. I also didn't go ride anything afterwards. So that's fair. You know, take that for what it's worth. <laughs> okay. If you are not too full, there's always time for dessert. Today's dessert is a quick discussion of current food-related news or experiences at Universal. So I don't know if anyone wants to chime in here. I know, Kayla, you had something to chat about. I have two things to chat about. One of them, which I haven't tried, and I'm curious if, Madeline, you tried. Huckleberry ice cream came out the day after I got home. Boo. I landed or, like, yeah, I woke up in the morning the day after I had had my flight home to, oh, new ice cream flavor, which, like, I'm not a big Huckleberry fan, but just to like say that I tried it on the day it came out would have been really exciting for me. So where is that, Kayla? Where is that located? Uh, Florian Fortescue. Yeah, you've got it. words I can half pronounce. (laughs) No, I haven't had that yet, but I definitely need to try it. I am always hesitant because I have flavors there I like so much that getting new things is hard, but I need to go try that. I'll try it. And it would go with my favorite is uh, peanut butter strawberry. So I can get a scoop of each Mm. and like the berries, you know, they won't like mix bad. So I'll let everyone know when I try it in March. And then Universal just released or not just, but recently released a guide to um, dining gluten free. They tracked or they, they went with like a family and the daughter had celiac. And I found out that Big Fire has a, like, gooey chocolate – I don't think it's a brownie. I think it's, like, a gooey chocolate cake, which – what are those called? The the molten – Like, a lava cake? Yeah. Yeah, molten lava cakes. I love them. And I hadn't had one since before I was diagnosed gluten-free. And then even before that, like, it was really rare – and there was this last year, there were these months where I I couldn't get it out of my head that like I was so craving a molten lava cake and we found a gluten-free one in New York City and it was amazing. So when I read that it's like, it sounds very similar to a molten lava cake, I think I finally found my, the dessert other than Florian Florescue ice cream that I'll get at Universal. So I'm really excited to try that. And yeah, I recommend reading it. They had some some good tips and tricks for gluten-free dining. Kelly, did you want to tell us about the mishap at Florian Pork's <laughs> Views? Yeah. So this, um, back to, we've already mentioned our friend and listener, Grace, caught a, as I like to call them, typo in the wild, uh, which Universal 
is kind of infamous for. I noticed a couple today when I was adding some of the menu items to our list here, but in Florian Fortescue's, which is probably the first time this sweet little ice cream shop has gotten mentioned twice in the same breath, but they had misspelled the word lavender for a very long time, having the last E be an A instead. So L-A-V-E-N-D-A-R was how it was spelled on their menu. And our friend Grace took a picture of it and maybe others too, but that's just the most recent one that I can think of. And it was posted on the UUOP Instagram. And lo and behold, a couple days later, (laughs) they fixed the spelling on the menu, guys. And that's both the physical menu and the digital menu, which I'm not sure if the, the one online was spelled wrong before or not, but it was just a funny little story to share. They're listening to us. They're changing lives every day. Seriously, that that's so funny because Lee has been like railing on that for so long. He's like, Lavendar. <laughs> like, yep, they spelled it wrong. <laughs> In other spelling news, I don't know if you guys saw, I thought this was really cool. In the Mardi Gras food booths, they oh, yes. misspelled Columbia mm-hmm. and they fixed it. And I think I read, like, I think it was the apology that I thought was, like, really nicely worded of, like, hey, we, we know this is a pretty big mistake to misspell. This is supposed oh. to be celebrating countries, and it's pretty messed up that we made, the, you know, this mistake. And so I thought it was, I thought it was cool how timely it was. And if I'm remembering correctly, that the apology I thought was a pretty good one. So I saw the same thing, and I, I felt like that, too. Thanks, Universal, for caring about all of us. I do. Shelby and I had a fun, so we're starting a monthly dinner series where we go out every month. And we went to, <laughs> that sounds way more official than it really is. It it's really fun. does. <laughs> <laughs> the two of us are going to go to dinner every month. <laughs> and we went to Orchid Court Lounge in Royal Pacific. That was pretty interesting. That's an interesting hotel. I could talk for hours about it, to be honest. I could talk longer than we sat at dinner about that dinner. But Shelby got to see my really sassy side right away. I didn't save any time because she told the waitress she was vegan. And then I didn't personally feel like the waitress took it seriously enough. So then when the waitress came over to me, I was like, I don't have any allergies, but she's <laughs> vegan. So don't for anything that's not vegan. So anyway, that was our <laughs> that was our experience. You can get your parking validated there. So if mm-hmm. you want to go to that hotel and you're not staying there and you're local or you're driving in, you can get your parking validated there. And of course, you could take the taxi over if you're uh, staying at a different resort. Yeah, no, that that parking validation is a huge pro tip because even if you're only there for the course of a dinner, mm-hmm. they're going to charge you the, what, $18 or whatever that it Oh my God, is. way higher. It's like it, yeah, it's a ridiculous amount of money. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, always, always, always get your parking validated. Yeah, that was Agreed. fun. That was a fun dinner though. It's fun to see the different restaurants and different parts of the resort. So always a fun thing to do. Definitely agree. Any other news? Um, I have a couple tidbits. If you guys remember at HHN, we had the African lentil and potato Sambusa coffin. Uh-huh. Uh, who had that, if anybody. Me. Um, that was amazing. <laughs> it's so good. So Universal just randomly decides to bring it back. And I mean, randomly, like they'll just place it somewhere for like a couple of weeks and then it will disappear and it will reappear at another stand. Is it still shaped like a coffin or is yeah, it like a, oh, it is. Okay. It is still shaped like a coffin. Okay. <laughs> they're, they're not quitting with the theme. Okay. <laughs> it's currently at the, um, the snack stand right by Velocicoaster and why am I, Oh, natural selections is what it's called. So it's next to Velocicoaster, like not the entrance of it. Um, sorry, I should say it's across from Jurassic Park River Adventure. That's more accurate, which is currently closed, unfortunately. But it's available at that snack stand. They will they'll put one in like the the case, but they have more in the warmer. So if you go to order it, don't think that they only have the one left. <laughs> and then also the vegan pasty, the little one, if you guys have ever seen it, they have it at the snack stand across from today cafe it was also in the um, hogwarts express station going two islands from universal not in the express lane in that little like um shop kiosk thing where they have snacks it's Mm -hmm. available there 
and oh. at the Magic Neep in Hogsmeade. It's been added to another location, and you can now get it at the Hopping Pot in Diagon cool. Alley, which is really exciting because I feel like, I mean, I'm mostly in Universal all the time. I don't go to islands as frequently, so that's more accessible for me personally, and it's on brand with Harry Potter and everything. That's kind of where it started, but you can also get it at the Today Cafe one. So, so four locations for that, which is exciting. That's awesome. Yeah. That's a lot of exciting news. I feel like Universal is really perfecting everything, gearing up for Epic. So I'm hoping that mm-hmm. everything is, is getting in pristine shape ahead of Epic opening next year. I feel like we could make a funny like reels, whatever, of like, where in the world is? And it's like that coffin (laughs) that would be really funny (laughs) with the carmen san diego theme song that would be hilarious like where is it this week shelby you have to have like a magnifying glass and like (laughs) like, peeking around oh and a giant wide brimmed hat yeah the big red hat (laughs) yeah oh my god that would be so funny i would do it (laughs) all right that's a promise folks so look out for that on our instagram (laughs) (laughs) to wrap things up we'd like to extend an invitation for you to connect with us there's plenty of room at the table of friends and we'd love to hear from you you can find the podcast on all the usual podcast platforms and please subscribe rate and review wherever you can find us on facebook at taste of universal on instagram at taste of universal podcast one word and follow Shelby on Instagram at Universal Orlando Vegans, all one word. You can email all of your questions and comments to the taste of universal at gmail.com. And we do really mean that, guys, that we want to hear from you. We want to hear. Obviously, this was not an exhaustive list of food to warm your bellies on a chilly day. So this we'd be here all night. It feels like we've been here all night, but we'd be here <laughs> even longer. If not that it hasn't been delightful, it's been incredible. I would love to hang out all night with you lovely people. But we really do want to hear from our <laughs> listeners about what their favorite things are. So I was wondering if you were gonna get keep getting stuck down the rabbit hole of more <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah, keep naming and naming. <laughs> I kind of live in the rabbit hole, so <laughs> <laughs> And then we literally go all night of Kelly. <laughs> anyway. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, for all your other Universal news and content, go listen to our network host, the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. As well as all the other podcasts on the network, Rush of Fear for all your year-round Halloween Horror Nights news, reviews, and chat, and the Theme Park Duo for coverage of everything West Coast. Please like, subscribe, and rate them all. We hope you enjoyed the second episode of The Taste of Universal and will join us again in the future. Our next episode will be out on the 8th of March. But until then, thanks for tuning in and don't forget to tip your server.